All right, today we are with Ezra. And first question, is that your na- like real name or is that your artist name? My birth given name. name. Yep. I feel like a lot of artists don't really have their like birth name. So like what inspired you to make that, keep that as your artist name? Um, <laughs> it's a pretty long story, but basically I was under a different alias and I was making stuff that like wasn't necessarily true to me. And then I switched it to Ezra because I wanted to start making stuff that was like more um, my emotions. I wasn't just like freestyling over a mic. I was making like rap stuff. So I switched oh, over to me. Rap stuff? Yeah, I'm from the Bronx. So like that's like where I, that's like the music I grew up in, you know? OK, so what made you switch from rap to like more sad or like it's is it like pop? It's like a pop emo like I, it's like a blend of everything. Uh, the real ones know Ezra Core. We got our own little genre going on. So what was the first name? Uh, the first name was Young Easy. It was like, literally, I used to be freestyling with my friends. And like, as a joke, they started calling me Young Easy. Cause like, my name's Ezra. And then I dropped a song on SoundCloud and it got like 20K streams in high school. And I was like, holy fuck, I'm fucking doing this. This is happening. Then like, I got a feature from fucking NLE Choppa and Jay Critch and like artists. And then next thing you know, I was like living a whole life that I had no interest living. Like being a fucking rapper. Being a rapper? How was that? It was, it was cool. It was just like hip hop, hip, hip hop fan bases are mad toxic. And it's also like, I wasn't like, I was just rapping. Like it wasn't that personal. I wasn't like putting any emotion in it or anything. So then like, I kind of had this moment when I was on shrooms and I was like, this shit is like fraudulent. Like, this is not you. Like I took all the music down. Like the labels that were fucking with me were like, we're not fucking with you anymore. Figure your shit out. With like all the money I had saved up from all the music I made. Like I went to Atlanta with it for a couple months. I just locked the fuck in, found this new sound, switched my name to Ezra and restarted. Wow. So you feel you're, you're being more true to yourself now. Yeah, I feel like, like I found my own sound that like no one else can copy. I found like Ezra, like my shit. Okay. So what genre would you consider is you? Ezra Core. <laughs> Ezra Core? Hyper pop, alternative rock, alternative pop, wherever the fuck you want to throw it, you can throw it. But as long as you enjoy it. Okay. Did you get heartbroken? Is that why you started making like sad music? I definitely had a... I feel like every artist has that moment where it's like you get your heart broken and like your first girl that you think you're gonna marry and da 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 and like that definitely played a p- factor in like me finding myself because I feel like you need that every person needs that heartbreak you know Type so you felt like that heartbreak made you who you are I wouldn't say that I don't want to give that girl too much credit oh but, no but but yeah I it definitely you need you need a situation where you your expectations are high and they get shattered to understand like what the real world is type shit. And what is the furthest childhood memory that you can remember that changed your life? And that could be regarding music or just in general. Um, childhood memory, that's a crazy question. I need a second. I have no (laughs) idea. Um, Did you play music when you were young? I mean, when I was like four or five years old, my parents, I don't remember it, but they told me I was like, I used to write songs and like run around the house singing them. But, um, as for childhood memories, I don't know, dude. I have no idea. I'm not going to lie. You blacked it all out. I played, I played basketball a lot growing up. Okay. That was like my thing. So I remember I got into some fights over basketball games and I feel like that made me who I am too. Well, you said you're Jewish. Did you ever go to sleepaway camp? Um, I'm, I can never like, so there's like really fire, like Jewish sleepaway camps that yeah. my parents can never afford to send me to. But when I was a lifeguard, I went to a sleepaway camp for two weeks until okay. I couldn't work there anymore because they started like drug testing all the lifeguards and I got fucked. But until that time, it was like fucking sick. It was awesome. I was like the lifeguard of like a lakefront. It was cool. Okay. So you said you're originally from the Bronx? Yeah, I'm from the Bronx. So what made you come to LA? Music? Yeah, I don't know. Uh, I was kind of just done with the whole New York scene. Once I wanted to rebrand, I wanted to like surround myself with new people that I felt were like like minded and trying to make like timeless music as opposed to just like sell drugs. <laughs> so I moved out here and I met a lot of my friends. There's Sachi over there. That's my friend Asher. Little shout out. That's Brayden. That's Jarrell. Those are some of my homies that like I moved out here. They also make music. They're like like minded people. They care about their crafts. It's like very different energy out here, which I like a lot. It's easy to get mixed in with the wrong crowd out here, but I got really lucky to find the right people. So I feel like the genre of music that you have, there's very like cult fan base. So do you have any like weird fan? fan stories um weird fan stories like crazy fan stories see 
I do, but I don't want to like expose the fans and make them feel bad. Um, all right, I'll tell this story, but like, it's all love to the fan that this was. Like, all it's love. it's all love. Like, it really is. But it's all just love. a crazy story. So I did an acoustic show in here, like in LA, like what three months ago, four months ago, something like that, and. Um, this girl drove out from like Arizona or some shit, like some crazy far away place with her boyfriend. And um, she was whatever, like sign this, y'all get it tatted, da da da, like super, super sweet, bought a bunch of merch. And she was, keep in mind, with her boyfriend. She comes up to me after the show, after the show, and she's like, with her boyfriend holding the camera, and she's like, can I kiss you? And I was like, I look at her boyfriend, like I look at her, and I was like, first of all, <laughs> Regardless of if your boyfriend was here, nah. But she's like, can you just kiss me on the cheek? And I was like, I had no idea what to do. So I just like went like, and then she like moved her face close to me. And like, it was like really fucking awkward. I'd never experienced that shit in my life. Oh my I should have just been like, hell nah. But like, I didn't want to be rude. And she just bought a bunch of merch. And I just, I felt mad uncomfortable. And I, I bet her boyfriend was fucking Oh yapping her head off on the way home <laughs> so do you deal with like a lot of groupie situation um i mean i don't know i i just live you feel me i i just do me that's what they all say i don't know i i if you're real you're real like if you're a fan of my shit unless you're acting like weird i'm not gonna call you a groupie but if you're like there definitely are people like me and all my friends like we kind of have like a little scene over here and like everything we do, there are like a lot of people that just like somehow spawn there. Okay. <laughs> so who are, who are you inspired by? In general, like music wise? In general, music. I guess music wise, it all started with X. I have like a tattoo for him. That's like my guy. When he, when like I used to hear him like talking about how you can do anything if you put your mind to it. Da, 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 da. And like when I was a kid, I loved his music. And when I'd hear him say that shit, it like actually like... I felt like he was talking to me, like you could fucking do this shit. And I got really, really into like trying to create my own path because of a lot of the shit that he would say. Um, nowadays, I'm really inspired by like a lot of stuff that's all over the place. A lot of my friends, um, fucking Sachi Six, Kennedy XOXO, their music is so fucking fire. Um, those two are, are crazy. Uh, I really like Dominic Fike. Dominic Fike, super sick. Um, I like a lot of really cool bands. There's a lot of cool people out. I like um, Backseat Lovers. Um, I don't know. There's a lot of really cool music out right now, but honestly, I take more inspiration from my friends than anywhere else. Yeah, I feel like guy friends are always the best. Like, they, like guy friend groups, like, got each other's back way more than girls. Shit. Um, I mean... Maybe, probably, yeah. But at the at the at the end of the day, it's like a different type of have your back. Like, cause if a guy friend group falls out, it's bad. Never <laughs> again. Like it's it, it might be clipped. If a girlfriend group falls out, I feel like they'll just see each other the next day and like be fine. Like they they fight all the time. When a guys are like fighting, it's like oh, it's it's fucking up. <laughs> like it's up. But I feel like they support more. Like your friends probably really support your career. Yeah, I mean, but like you see girls in like their Instagram comments. It's like Yas Queen, all that. You know what I'm saying? They be they be supportive. Okay, okay, okay. Um, have you ever had a normal job? Yeah, I, I was a lifeguard. I worked at a shoe store that like also did clothing, but I was so bad at folding that I just really did the shoes. <laughs> so if you weren't doing music, is there anything else you'd be doing? Jesus Christ, probably not, bro. I, I would not be here. That's the honest truth. If I wasn't doing music, that should save my life. Really? Yeah. Mm. How? Um, I was just in a dark place, and I found music, and it saved my life. I found a place to convey my emotion. Do you think that depression is more normalized nowadays? Um, do I think depression is more normalized? Yeah, like like I, like in Gen Z and like in today's society, like depression. Hell yeah, because I mean, depression a lot of a lot of sadness stems from comparison. I think that's just how it goes for a lot of people's lives. Like if you were just having present, if you were present in your moment and just living your life, a lot of the time there's really not that much to be sad about. But it's seeing everyone else's lives and the lack of mm. what they have that makes people yeah. really sad. And with Gen Z, it's like social media is so prominent in everybody's lives. You have no option but to see what everybody else is up to and like yeah. everybody's trying to show the best parts of their lives and you're only going to see the stuff that they're trying to make you jealous of so it's like it's very easy to sit back and be like fuck i need to be doing more i'm definitely like um at i'm guilty of doing the same thing like trying to be like i need to do this i need to do this but it's like that's why i got my friends to like 
calm me down. I had a breakdown like a week ago. <laughs> this motherfucker, like, I, it, shit gets real. Like, she was asking me to do the the interview earlier in the week, and I was just like, I can't. Like, I can't. <laughs> I was just going through it. But like, that's what that's what it is. Like, that's what being an artist is. It's like ups and downs, and that's what it is. What is the hardest part of being an artist? That um, expectations never. It, nothing ever happens the way you want it to happen. Even if it does end up going well, it's never the way you plan on it going well. Like, I planned on doing all this TikTok shit and da da da. It's the videos that I put so much effort into that I try my ass off, don't do shit. And it's the ones that I fucking throw up and don't think about that end up fucking blowing up and getting me a fan base. It's like, it's just hard to not care and you have to not care. So for people, fans out there dealing with dark times, what would you tell them? Suck it up, be a top G- No, I'm joking. Um, depression's real. I think mental health is a real thing. Um, for anybody that says otherwise, I think they just haven't experienced the same thing that other people have. Uh, don't get me wrong. I do think there is something that's like, tough it up. Like, there are times when you do have to tough it up, but like, at the end of the day, it's just gonna come out full circle even harder if you just suppress this shit. So I think expression is like really important with regards to dealing this shit. So just find some way for you to express that shit, whether it's through art, through work, through exercise, through whatever the fuck your ways of like getting back to a normal headspace. That should be your vice, you know, and avoid that being drugs. So what's your vice? My vice is hanging out with my friends is spending quality moments with people I care about. That shit calms me down more than anything. Um, there's really not much else that can calm me down. You know, like I smoke weed, I do shrooms, I stop all hard drugs, I don't do any of that. I just like to just sit down and play some 2K with my homies or make a song with my friends. That just calms me down. So you say do shrooms a lot? I do shrooms, yeah, I do shrooms. Do you have any like cool stories about that? You wanna hear a cool story? Yeah. I did ayahuasca like a couple- You did ayahuasca? This is the second person I met that has an ayahuasca story. I did ayahuasca, that shit was mad trippy. Like, so trippy. So the does ayahuasca all the time. Shout out. Um, should I say that? I feel like I shouldn't say that. I was going through it because a lot of shit was going on. I have this project coming out next month and I need everything to go perfect. and. I don't want to let anybody down. A lot of people have expectations for me, blah, blah, blah. So it's just a lot of pressure. And he's like, bro, you need to do ayahuasca. It'll help you gain perspective. And I was like, all right. I did ayahuasca. Um, I walked into this house. It looked like fucking Kung Fu Panda's dojo. Like the whole house was like bamboo looking, like weird, like secluded ass place, like weird path you go up. I go up and then there's, there's all these like older artists that like some of them I recognized. I was like, who the, what? It's some like weird elitist shit. It felt like I was like Illuminati. Literally, I was like, "What the hell is this?" But they were all super cool, super nice people. And then this like old per Persian, Peruvian, Peruvian, something? Peruvian, Peruvian. This old Peruvian dude walked in, and he was like, "Hello, like, <laughs> Hello. welcome." And everyone's like, "Oh my god!" Like, I forgot his name, but they're like, "Oh, like the shaman, he's here." But they're all like ooing and eyeing, like, "Ah, it was so amazing last time." And I was like. What the fuck is this shit? I was like, what the fuck am I about to do? Because I was the only first timer there. Everybody else had been doing that shit. So there's like it's like this thick ass brown liquid in a water bottle with the like the the wrapping ripped off. Like it looked so sketch. I was like, what the fuck is this? And he started pouring it in like a little shot glass and saying these like it's like hum like these weird like Peruvian like things. And I was like, bro, I have no idea what this is. Like whatever. And everybody's sitting there like. And I'm like, what the fuck? And I whipped out my phone and was like, phone away. Like, don't go on your phone this whole time. And I was like, all right, fuck it. I threw my phone to the side. I'm like in this like sleeping bag and a blanket. Everybody's like lying down on the floor in like this dark room. So whatever, I drink the shit. I'm lying down. I don't feel anything. Everybody's like lying down and they're like, he's like singing these like weird Peruvian folk tales. Everybody has a bucket to throw up in for if they purge. And I'm looking around and like one dude starts throwing up and everybody's like, Good job. I'm so happy for you. And I'm like, what the fuck? He just yacked. Did y'all not see him yak? Like, he just yacked all over, like, a massive amount of, like, dark shit into a bucket. Like, that. why are you congratulating him right now? None of it made any sense to me. And then um, I went up to them, and I'm like, yo, like, I still, I need more. Like, I haven't taken, I don't feel anything. So I took a little more. Still didn't feel anything. I'm lying down. I'm like, I really want to go on my phone. They're like, don't go on your phone. Trust me. They're all feeling it, like, going crazy. One guy's, like, sitting there, like, just laughing. Like, the guy next to me is just like, ha, ha, ha. And the guy next to me is sitting there, like, 
like and i'm just like what the fuck is going on i'm like i walk up to the shaman and i'm like hey like can i get one more and he's like don't do that buddy he's like sit down chill drink water okay i drink water and i sit down i lie back with my eyes closed and like after five minutes i feel this like big like warm ball in my body it was the weirdest feeling ever and it like rolls down my leg up my leg down my other leg up my leg like up arm all this shit it makes ways across my whole body and then it hits my neck and it hits my head and the second it hits my head like light flashed and then like i was somehow like i got like vivid vivid memories of like myself as a child and like my grandma who actually ended up passing away like a week and a half later she was really sick i had like a a vivid vivid memory of her being like talking to me about my her my wedding day and how she wanted to be there for it and it was like super emotional because she's not going to be there for it and i was like damn like and like something told me like you have to go home like then i saw like i saw like the, the first time i stood up for a friend when i was in like kindergarten like weird memories that i literally never remembered until that moment like that actually happened like and it was going and it slowly got faster and faster and faster that's not the guy that i thought and then i fucking um i had like I, I had like a weird like it, it was like you ever seen a movie where like memories go faster and faster and faster to the point where you can barely even like recollect what they are it was like super like four times speed whatever and then it just stopped and I was like in this like shirt that I had never seen before with like pins on it and like these baggy jeans and like shoes I had never seen and I was like what the fuck I but I didn't in my head, I was like, I don't know where I am, but like for some reason, I didn't question it. It was like, it felt like I was supposed to be there. And like, I walked outside, like moved these curtains. And it was like a festival crowd. And I walked up on stage and without me like telling myself to talk, cause I, I'm like, normally, at least for me, dreams are in third person. So like, I literally will see myself. Like I won't see my, th through my eyes, like I'll see myself, but this was all first person. So like, I walk out, I'm looking at the microphone, I'm looking at the crowd and I'm like, are y'all cool if I bring my dad out to play guitar? Cause my dad plays guitar, but like, He's never like played with me or really anything and my dad came out on stage and was like ripping guitar and it was like super emotional super crazy and then right after i started like getting like all these memories of like a lot of like dms i got about like how this my music helped them or like somebody that came up to me at a show like it was just like all these different moments as to like people telling me my music helped them and it was like something was telling me like this is why you're doing this shit like you're not doing this shit for fucking fame you're not doing this shit to get to, to meet your expectations for what you're supposed to be you're doing this shit so people can like relate to your pain like i did with like a guy like x or like a lot of these artists like a guy like pete these guys that i looked up to and listened to like and i want to be able to do that for other people so that helped and then i came back too and i was just like the calmest i had ever been in my entire life like not a single worry on planet earth like which i'm a big overthinker like all my friends will attest to it like I get in my head about everything and like for the first time ever it was just like nothingness it was crazy and like i yacked everywhere like it was like oh I, I skipped a part my bad so right after i felt super calm then i was like so why do i ever get anxious like why do i get anxious and then like it was like this dark cloud came over me and it was like you need to be the biggest like now like you need to like you you told yourself you'd be so much farther along your career when you were 22 like when you were 18 you said by the time you're 21 you're gonna be like killing shit i don't know doing all this shit and that all started to give me a really big cloud of anxiety it's like you're not home right now but your grandma's sick you need to be home and like it was like this and then just boom just threw up like Whoa. this dark ass liquid into the bowl and like oh. Better? The owner of my label came up to me and he's like, good job. And I was like, bro, I just threw up. I feel oh, like so once you throw up is when you hit your like. Yeah, and then I literally was the calmest I've ever been in my life for the next like two or three weeks. I didn't smoke weed. I didn't like Saji remembers because I went back to New York. I went back home and yeah, you were home too. We like locked in together. I smoke all the time. Like I didn't need to smoke. I didn't need to do anything that I felt like would normally ease my brain. Um, and since then, I've been smoking a lot less. I've been like, I feel like a lot more present recently it's funny because he actually just asked me to do it again and i don't know if i should <laughs> but it definitely helped a lot it was just a very extensive experience like it was a lot to go through and i don't know if i'd be down to do that all go so through how all. long was that whole process because it sounds like it's like hours it's like five hours six hours and you were basically laying down the whole time and it was all in your head it's closed like 90 percent of the time all of it was in my head that's crazy there you go a lot of people say when they take ayahuasca they meet the mother did you meet the mother so what they mean by meet the mother is so like they call ayahuasca like a, a a harsh mother and like there's 
There's a drug called San Pedro that they said it's like a loving dad. I've never done San Pedro, but the harsh mother just means it's gonna show you what you need to see, not what you want to see. So I guess I did, cause like it showed me the thing about my grandmother. It showed me about perspective with regards to why I'm doing this stuff. And like, yeah, like it wasn't the easiest thing to see. I obviously like yacked and it wasn't great, but like it definitely gave me perspective that I needed in the moment. And you weren't scared at all? I mean, Unless I'm doing something stupid, like there ain't shit to be scared about. I know, I trust my, the guy who owns my label, he's a good dude. And I know he wouldn't do shit. He's got kids, he's got a family, like he's been done this shit. I know he wouldn't do anything that's like putting his life in danger. So like, if I'm safe, I'm safe. Like the fuck, worst comes to worst. Like if I get fucked up off his shit, he better cut that check, you feel me? So are you spiritual? Yeah, I'm, well, what do you mean by spiritual? I, I would consider myself religious in my own way. And what does that mean? Like, what do you believe in? Well. I'm, I'm personally a Jew, but with regards to religion, I believe religion is a man-made construct that is to help humans understand something that no human will ever understand, right? Ever. No human's ever going to understand what this concept of a higher power is, right? So, um, what you know is what you have. I don't know how deep I'm supposed to go into this, but this thing called, like, have you ever heard of Pascal's Wager? No. So Pascal's Wager is like, yeah, 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 you're good, you're good. I'll see y'all. Yo, go inside, you're good, you're good. Um, you could hang. You know what Pascal's wager is? Yeah, so Pascal's wager is this thing where it's like, um, you go through life not believing in God and there's no God, nothing fucking happens, right? You go through life believing in God and there's no God. Maybe you lost out on some stuff that you might have not done if you're being observant, but and ultimately you might have gained some faith. You might have gained some. Um, spiritualness that helped you in some given amount of time so it's like a give and take but yeah maybe you took L you believe in God your whole life and there's no God let's say you go through life believing in God and there is a God you're straight let's say you go through life denying God and there is a God like you're fucked yeah. you feel me like, so like know. whatever you know I feel like it's valid for you to try to adhere to in whatever way you can I personally grew up Jewish so that's what I know that's what I'm gonna try to adhere to if I would have grown up Muslim if I would have grown up Christian if I would have grown up whatever the fuck whatever set of rules that I'm given to adhere to whatever this higher power is that nobody will ever understand I'm gonna try my best to do that and I feel like it'll if there is some higher power which I personally believe there is nobody fucking knows that maybe he'll be on my side you know maybe he'll give me some help nothing to lose you know everybody's like there's no God prove it it's like yeah, you can look for proof your whole fucking life. You're never going to find shit. But at the same time, it's like, you're also not going to find proof that there's no God. You know, it's like, you just kind of got to go through the motions. I was taught what I was taught, and I practice what I was taught. That's all I do. So do you believe in aliens? Hell yeah, I believe in aliens. Why not? Yeah, I mean... Think we, like, that the world would end by an alien invasion or the government? The government? I mean... I don't fucking know. Like, the, the government in general? The United States government? Like... The United States government? Um, I don't I mean, I feel like it's really ignorant to think that we're the only species on in the universe. Like, that's like super like a human thing to think. You know what I'm saying? Like, there's no, there's nobody else that's like us. We're the only like, uh, there's probably somewhere out there. The universe is pretty fucking big. Like, there's got to be something out there. Um, do I think it's more likely to end? I feel like our government can't end the world, but they can do a lot of serious damage to it. An alien invasion could literally end the world. Like, they could actually just blow it up if they have some technology we've never received before. So that's my answer. Okay. And, um, changing the topic back to music, um, so where do you see yourself in five years within music? Stadium tours, all that. I'm trying to do big stuff, um, and I appreciate everybody that's rocking with me now, but we're at stage one. This project, I got a project coming out next month. It's my first project I've ever released, and it's a little EP, and it's like, the songs I got after it, I mean, already even more excited about. Like, there's a lot of stuff planned that's coming up, and shit, I can't wait for the world to hear it. That's all, and I think it'll open up some new doors for me. So what? So you said you have a new EP coming out, right? April 5th. I haven't announced that yet, but fuck it, I'm gonna announce it like this Wednesday. So there you go. April. 5th. April 5th. Make sure you check it out. I mean, this will definitely be out before then. So. Fuck it, April 5th. Awesome. Do you have any like shows or anything coming up? I'm gonna do a release party in LA, like a release party show April 4th. Uh, haven't dropped the ticket link yet, but I will soon. It's gonna be free, so just pop out. Uh, hopefully I'll be touring by the end of the year. That's the plan right now, but we're gonna figure it out, you know? You roll with the punches, that's life. <laughs> Thanks so much.